your final object, which is? Is a, is a walking stick. It's a very high-tech walking stick. I bought this um, in, in Colorado when I was there last year, and what, what's, well, you probably didn't even care. Why am I telling you all this? But uh, it, it breaks apart. You can, you can make it into small pieces, and it, it fits neatly into a small bag or, or a rucksack, which is something that walking sticks very rarely do. So I'm very pleased, was very pleased to have it, and it's extremely light. But the relevance of it, I'm sorry I got distracted there for a moment, but the relevance of it is that, um, well, I, I'm not quite sure. I really love walking, and, and I tried to walk as much as I could. I do think it's the best way to see any place, but especially it's a good way to see Britain. Uh, and also, uh, I think because I thought it might lead us into a discussion of the British countryside, which I've touched on already, but it is something that I, I do think is the most glorious achievement of, of this nation. The fact that you have this... You know, it's such a finite place, and you have this landscape that has been so, so worked over, and yet, you know, is, is used for two, two reasons, for both productive reasons to, you know, it's farmed, it produces food and all that, but also as an amenity. That's something that, that's an idea that just doesn't exist in America. Land has one purpose in America. You either farm it or you, or you enjoy it, you know, make it into a national park. The idea of doing both of those together in the same place, I thought, is just brilliant. Could you, could you ever have imagined that, that when you began doing this for a living that Robert Redford, sex god of the 70s, uh, would be playing Bill Bryson in a movie of your book? Um, when he was nearly 80, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact is, and it has to be said, because I, I was 44 when I did the book and he is nearly 80 now, but it has to be said, he looks better now, nearly 80, than I did when I was... <laughs> 44. Um, no, I didn't. I, I mean, it never occurred to me. Never, I never thought of it in that way. Um, but I was really pleased. I mean, genuinely very pleased that, that it was him. He, it was his company that bought it, and he was always the driving force, the driving creative force behind the making of this movie. And there was a huge, for me, a huge comfort factor in that because, you know, you know that Robert Redford doesn't make dumb movies, and, yeah. you know, whatever he does with it, it'll probably be something that I'll be quite pleased to be associated with. I won't be... So my only fear was that somehow you would lose interest in it and it was, it would, the movie, the rights would be sold on to somebody and it would turn, turn out to be a Jim Carrey movie or something. And, um, <laughs> uh, or, or the Ferrelli brothers would make it into, you know, a, American Pie does the Appalachian Trail or something. Who knows? <laughs> but, um, but, but as long as it was Robert Redford, I was very, very happy. And I think that was, was borne out. He, I think he made a... Uh, I know it had very mixed reviews, but I think the movie he, he made was, from my point of view anyway, I mean, it was very faithful to the spirit of the book, and I was entirely happy with it. So the Bryson line, who would you have, who would be the equivalent Robert Redford in England that you would cast to play you in the English version here? <laughs> of course.